Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, look at this little mustache I've got going on here. The littlest of mustaches. I was, uh, you know, last week I was able to figure out how to flip the video. And today I went and looked and didn't see those options anymore. So I don't know what's going on. It's going to be backwards this week. Hello, Sinful Enigma. How are you? How are you doing in beautiful, warm, I'm sure, Phoenix, Arizona? I am here in the rainiest of places, subtropical New York City, where it is currently pouring rain. We had uh, some lovely rolling thunder fly by earlier before, and uh, uh, it was loud. Now we're just dealing with the sky cry. It's raining in the dingy yellow New York side. Hello, Lauren. Nice to see you as well. Uh, yeah, uh, it's crummy weather here in the city, but it's good to get out of the apartment. Uh, yesterday I was very active. Today, not so much. But uh, hello, Carla. How are you? Uh, Carla, I... Uh, I want to hear about this punk rock reunion that happened last weekend in Milwaukee. But I, of course, I could not go. And I was really more of a satellite player in that scene, but uh, it sounds like everyone had a good time. Of course, Mike Gregoire did the hosting. Friend, our friend, mutual friend, Toast, uh, was uh, nice enough to host a lot of the parties. Toast was the host with the most, I'm sure, in that uh, backyard zone that he likes to hang out in. Uh, I had no idea he's been... I've never been to his house in Milwaukee since, I think, well, since he got married, easily. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's been a nice time here in the rain, in the car, rainy car. I don't know if anyone saw my Instagram. Today I managed to change the battery on my car's fob uh, we had two sets of car keys for the car I don't know, I lost one and the other one that was remaining had had no battery in it for like many years so I was able to uh, find one, which is hard hard to find car, uh, those watch batteries you know that you need, I had to order it on Amazon, it took forever but now we've got uh the ability to open them and close the car without it, the alarm going off. So, Carl, you're saying it was fun and good to see folks, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know how many people turned out. I mean, not that the Milwaukee punk scene back in the 80s was a huge thing, but uh, uh, were, did any old bands get together and to uh, play again? That would be unlikely. But like I was thinking maybe like Detroitson or something like that might play. Uh, or some other weird punk rock band from back in the Disney. But, uh, unfortunately, I could not do it. I had to go do an improv festival in Philadelphia, which was fun. We did a show. I wish I could have stayed more to hang out and see the other groups. Uh, but I did the modern adult thing, and I drove down to Philadelphia, did improv, and then got back in my car and drove home. Uh, well, sorry to hear there weren't any more bands. Uh, you know, it's it's easier to play CDs of old or MP3s of old bands rather than to have the uh, the bands actually have to get together and practice for a month before they can play for their old friends. Um, yeah, and the whole Dick Kreutzen thing for me was always like uh, I was really aware of them. I don't know if I ever actually saw them. <laughs> By the time I moved to Milwaukee in 87, uh, you know, every, they were like really well known in the neighborhood and I would people would be like talking about this person was hanging at the Krusty House or this person was hanging at the, the De Kreutzen House and I would be like, I don't know any of these people. Well, well. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had I had some FOMO, but then the reality is that I would be there. That I would really only know like four people, so uh, I 
I, I consoled myself with that knowledge. Um, and uh, the, the Philadelphia improv thing was great. Now, unfortunately, the improv team I'm on is, uh, got into the Out of Bounds Improv Festival in Austin, Texas, and I was hoping to go see that show, but or to perform there, but it does not appear like I will be going. Hello, Kelly. It's nice to see you, Kelly. High school classmate. Lauren Morell was just watching, but she is no longer watching, I believe. Um, and is it, who else is watching? Is that, it looks like Betsy Good is watching. Um, but, uh, yeah, Philadelphia. I always forget that it is two hours away and that, uh, it's a nice place to be. Oh, it wasn't just punk rockers. So there are probably some new wave people there too. Maybe some emos. <laughs> Uh, general east side weirdos of the period. Uh, yeah, Philadelphia was fine. It was a good show. I mean, we had a good, it's a really nice theater. So that's always nice to perform in a nice theater that actually has facilities for people to warm up in and uh, to goof around in before you get on stage and great seats and all that. It's always, it's always great. I've performed in plenty of theaters that were literally a black room with uh, folding chairs and shit, shit like that. This was actually like lovely uh, velvet or velour uh, seats, ornamentals with ornamental seating. It was really crazy, like out of some sort of old theater. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was fun. I, yeah, I would definitely go again. But I'm sad I won't be going to Austin because uh, I have people I'd like to meet out there too. But uh, I just cannot afford it. Being unemployed is a drag. But <laughs> uh, are you? I assume you went back to Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, what was I going to say? I was hoping to come back to Minneapolis this year for the F Plus podcast festival, which is, takes place there. Um, but they're doing it in Seattle this year instead. So I don't think I'll be able to afford to do that unless they... Uh, Unless I get a job. Well, let's hope. By, the t by October, if I don't have a job... Oh, boy. I don't even like to discuss it. Um, we'll see. Got the, got the irons to the fire. Got making all the, making all the moves. I'm making money moves. I'm like, Car I'm like Cardi B over here. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't just dance. I make money moves. I believe is the rap lyrics, as I like to say them. But... Um, Yes, that is where things are currently at. Uh, I was going to say, I, I, I went to, and saw Incredibles 2 last week, and I thought it was fantastic. I wish it didn't take 14 years to come out, but it was pretty dang good. Oh, thank you. I think I, I'm glad you believe in my ability to get a job. Uh, it's just a, it's a weird economy right now. Uh, I've been going to these WeWork spaces where you go and you hang out with uh, other people and work and it's just a way to get out of your house. Because certainly, I like working in my house, but it is a zone of distractions as far as work is concerned. So, you know, I'll be like, you know what I should eat? You know what? While I'm eating, I should watch TV. You know what? After I watch TV... I should fire a video game. Oh, you know what? I need to rearrange all these books. <laughs> it is difficult to uh, con control those imp those impulses. Pardon me. But uh, yeah, so I've been going to these weed workspaces, which are basically restaurants that don't do lunch, and uh, this company sort of arranges to have someone sit there and make sure people don't go ape shit in the restaurant and they give you free water and coffee and things like that and it's uh, it's kind of a nice um, change of pace plus at the two times I went last week I actually chatted with a person which is unusual for me to be like hey what are you up to let's talk I'm the weird old guy at the table next to you um, 
But in both instances, it was sort of a... Yeah, you never know what people next to you are working on. Or my, how they might have some sort of interconnected interests that you might be able to uh, manipulate. But, um, yeah, it was... Uh, I met the CEO of Partender which is a company that does bar inventory management with your tablet or cell phone. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, and via that, I made, managed to sort of get involved in introducing him to other people and whatever. Now, the hard part for me is always, like, once you get that introduction, like, I'll, make, I'll meet this guy. And he may not be interested in what I got, but he may be interested in people I know. So, like, how do you monetize that? Or can you monetize that? I don't think you can. I mean, some people might be like, I'm a consultant, right off the bat. Uh, I just, I guess I need to think about presenting myself that way. It seems odd to me, if you ask me. But, um, yeah, how do you do that kind of... Uh, that, that uh, networking. I mean, I networked. I chatted. I met people. It's just a matter of, <laughs> of like, somehow wringing that into or molding it into a shape and that shape becoming some sort of a new job <laughs> or opportunity. Um, yeah. Man, it is raining here. I don't know if you can hear it on the phone. It's tip tap tippity tapping all over my windows. Uh, our lovely acidic rain that we get here in the city. I can't, I can't, my oldest son, Ace, appeared right before I started broadcasting to tell me that he was going for a walk in the rain with no umbrella or raincoat. Now, I have, I, re I remember doing that when I was young, when I was a youngster. Oh, hello, David Salazzo. I was wondering where you've been lately. You've you've disappeared. You were not active on the social medias. Uh, Carla, this is Dave Salazzo joining the call or joining the show. He's a, uh, a guy I went to grade school and younger with. <laughs> uh, back a long time ago. Uh, but uh, now he lives in Canada. Scattered across the earth all of our friends are from this mighty city New York City all the almost everyone I know no one lives here anymore everyone is scattered to many corners of the earth um, <laughs> I'm then you must be my oldest friend too I don't I don't you know track people like that you know what I'm saying but uh, I definitely I definitely have known you for a really long time that is very true uh yeah, I guess. Road of Shalom. That'd probably be where we met. But, um. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, it's funny. Oh, so, uh, Dave was just, uh. Uh. Talking. Road of Shalom is the, uh. Jewish. Uh, nursery school that we went to. Or kindergarten. In nursery school? No. It was the... I went to nursery school at that church that is on 86th Street in Amsterdam in kindergarten at Road of Shalom, the Jewish school, where my dad had to join the congregation for some kind of a discount, which is an absurdity. Look, Dave, I got a biting thing. It's a fetish. I know it now. I can't help it. As a child, I bit a lot. Uh... You know, I don't, I don't like have to have like a stick of cinnamon in my mouth. But if someone's got their, the fleshy part of their arm near me, I'm gonna goddamn chew it. There's nothing, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing I can do to stop myself. Um, uh, yes. Well, you got your revenge on me by having my teeth come out in your knee. Uh, still a vivid memory for, for all involved. I forget. <laughs> I don't know if I was trying to bite you or what. But, Carla, when we were both maybe like, I don't know, five or six or something like seven maybe, I was at David's house and we were wrestling in his kitchen and I came down, my mouth came down on his knee and my teeth just pulled out and 
I pulled out up and both my teeth were just stuck in his knee. Uh, good times? <laughs> but uh, that's very true. It's very funny. A funny memory. But uh, I was going to say, David, we were talking about... Um, uh, we were having sort of a memorial. My, my mom, my dad, and my brother... Oh, my mom and my brother and myself were having a memorial for my father, who had been dead 20 years on last Thursday. And uh, your mother came up for some reason where they were hanging... My mom and your mom had been hanging out at some point, And uh, uh, your mom... They were getting along, and then your mom said to my mom, like, you know, you're so... Oh, no, she said it to my grandmother. <laughs> she said, Joe, Yo, you're so pleasant. You can't be all Irish, can you, are you? Like, it was sort of a, a weird Welsh dish, uh, diss on my grandmother. Uh, which my grandmother related to my mother, which is a, it was a very funny story. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, it's very, it is true. We are very old friends. Although we did not speak for a long time, uh, just due to life and circumstances of that regard. Um, but, you know, there are people who, like, get off of Facebook. Like, people who uh, can't handle, like, my co my former co-worker at Columbia who got off Facebook because he would see his friends update about their lives in Portland, where he was from, or had lived, and he couldn't handle it. He just felt like he is having like serious FOMO and uh, you know, felt like you know, just missing out. Um, but then I have other people who are like, ah, it's a waste of time. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um, and uh, but then there's this, right? Where you get to see your friends or see what they're doing. You know, majority of posts are straight up garbage uh, about politics or other dumb shit. But, you know, there's something to be said about staying connected. And, uh, you know, I firmly believe this article that I posted a few years ago about the importance of uh, male relationships in this modern age, it's really hard for men to keep men fr male friends uh, and maintain a family and all that nonsense. And it goes, I'm sure it goes the same way for women. But uh, uh, having the, the ability to connect with your old pals is a, a is is a big deal and be able to share easily without having to you know set up a time or whatever it's important i think uh you know it's one of the reasons i really like my video game playing is i'm able to hang out with my pals nightly if i so choose um unfortunately they all live in california so i have to stay up super late and suffer in other ways but that's my choice Hey, Nate Gubin watching from, are you in Portugal? Or are you back from your insane world trip that you, that you, you seem to always be on? Um, uh, yes, that is, is that the same article that I posted last year? It may, it may very well be. So check the, if you are interested in, in, uh, men's <laughs> health issues, you got this article. It was very, it was a very important article. Um, and I, I've definitely made more efforts to, uh, even with sort of like acquaintances here in the city, just sort of go get a beer every once in a while, just to sort of stay connected. Cause it's important. Uh, my shirt says, uh, Hey kids, put me in your enemies. And it's a happy knife. This is an, uh, an early, uh, threadless t-shirt that I have. Um, and, you know, I was saying that Chuck Lauer, or Deke Step Back, whatever you want to call him, uh, he um, he told me that there was a function there you could tell tell Facebook to turn the video, to flip the video. And I was like, oh, great. And I found it, and then today I couldn't find it. So, sure it's going to stay backwards for today. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And then, uh, so I was saying to, to David Salazzo, who I went to, to school, to school, grade school with and nursery school with, that, uh, I recently was playing, uh, Asher, my youngest son was playing baseball, little league this summer with, or this spring with this guy, J uh, Jason Falani, who was the coach. 
and it turns out that he is an actor and he actually knows um, Sam Sokolow somehow through the world of acting. And so on a recent Facebook post, we were both like, holy shit, we both know Sam Sokolow. It's a fucking small world, especially when you find out your connections via social media. It is interesting. And so, I mean, people who... When did this happen? No, it was, it was over a week ago that I had my sort of falling out with a friend who I made a joke on their Facebook page and they flipped out on me and called me a coward and a bastard and an asshole. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, when I would tell people that story, they would be like, that's why I'm not on face social media. I don't want any of that blowback or any of that stuff. And it's just sort of like... You know, it, it bugged me. I, don't get me wrong. It totally bugged me. <laughs> and this guy unfriended me over, like, what I thought was a clever bit of uh, dumb joke. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, got to get that sarcasm tag up there, I guess. But, you know, it was an... It was... Uh, I, I don't have... I don't think I have a social media addiction. I like to put it myself out there. Uh, and share because otherwise, how are people going to know what you're doing? Uh, I need to let I need to let people know I'm living my best goddamn life, even if I'm not. Oh, I forgot to wear my gold chains and all my facial tattoos. I want to know who's giving those guys all those all those rappers all those facial tattoos, because you know, giving someone a facial tattoo. It's just a bad idea. <laughs> just being like, yeah, man, you want to be a rapper? Don't do that. Dave Salazzo, thank you for tuning in. We can uh, chat. We can chat when we want to. <laughs> Let me know when you want to chat. We can leave our friends behind. Do 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 do. Men without hats. Yes. Um. <laughs> um but yeah. Uh, Nate, we're going to be at the beach in uh, at the end of this month. If you're interested in uh, coming up with the wife, I know historically the wife doesn't want to come or has a multitude of unbreakable appointments, but uh, you're more than welcome to come up again. We, we're going to be up there, uh, yeah, the 29th? through whatever two weeks is. So we'll be up there. Um, Amanda and that clan will also be there the first week and only Amanda and her kids will be there half of the second week. So plan accordingly. If you're around. It's not that far. And uh, you can always go to the outlet malls and shop for, you know, going back to school in fall. Um, can you bring the dog? Is that meatball? The dog? <laughs> uh, my mom, you can, you, dogs are welcome at the beach. Uh, I'm assuming this is the dog you're talking about. Uh, yeah, dogs are welcome at the beach. My mom has her, uh, Pomeranian. I don't think there will be other dogs, although there are other dogs on the beach, so. There are no dogs allowed on the beach during the middle of the day, just because it's crowded and that people don't want dogs running around. But they are allowed for walking in the morning and afternoon. So, plan accordingly. There is no uh, dog euthanasia squad for dogs that are breaking the law. They're just people giving you tickets. Now, I have my druthers, dog euthanasia. Dog, oh, Dan, you don't have to. Danny will have his own guitar there. There's no doubt about it. Uh... What am I seeing here? Oh, that girl's wearing... It's like a wet t-shirt contest out here. That girl's shirt is like the exact color of her skin. It's. It looks like she is a mannequin. Um, yeah, well bring, up, bring up a guitar for yourself. I'll be bringing my acoustic guitar so I can drive everyone crazy playing over and over again the short pieces of uh, parts of Cochise by Audio Slave that I know. Yeah, oh, dirty. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, my my time in the car is has come to a close. 
So, I will be leaving you. Thanks to everyone who tuned in to chat so that or uh, and watch me talk. Who just joined? Someone at the very end of the call. Oh, it's John Biddens. Hello, John. Nice to see you. Uh, I believe you are also in Minneapolis. Uh, Carla Fulci was just on before, who also is from Milwaukee and also uh, lived in Minneapolis. And she is... Uh, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, anyway. These are just facts, I'm saying. I don't know if you made it down to the punk rock reunion in Milwaukee. I heard it was a jam. Now he's gone. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Nate.